uh, dear Earthmates, we are visiting Tianchi Martin Liao uh, in Germany. Uh, my Chinese friend and I uh, met uh, thanks to Pan International gatherings, uh, the World Association of Writers, and also we both uh, wrote for Samsonia Way as columnists, uh, talking about um, the situation in China and in Turkey and also uh, international uh, affairs, let's say. Um, uh, Tianqi, Martin Liao uh, is an activist, a human rights defender, an author, and uh, the president of the Independent Chinese Center, uh, Pen Center, uh, Independent uh, Pen Center uh, of China. Yes. And um, this is the episode of the Earth Civilization Dialogues in relation with, uh, with the idea of building a higher civilization based on all the experience and uh, treasures of humanity. And having said that, uh, what would you like to uh, start with, dear Tianqi? Well, I don't know you whether you can hear the 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 sound of the uh, outside. Lots of church are ringing the bell, mm. and it is a warning for all the people because now Europe is in war. It is incredible. No one had e ever imagined that Vladimir Putin would dare to start a war in Europe. It is a, it is a war against humanity. It is a war against international law and even it's against his own interest. So to start with that, I first of all, I want to thank you very much to um, initiate such a uh, global um, civilization dialogue. And uh, I'm really happy that I can talk with you today because it's a very, very special situation. We have, well, not totally peace in the whole world because there's always war in the local, in certain area. But in Europe, such a large form of uh, war, and uh, actually for me, the reason is not acceptable why uh, Putin started this war. It's totally unacceptable. And I think it's just, our world situation is, is messed up with values, with um, our trust in peace, in freedom, in democracy. You see, Putin is a, for me, he's a dictator and he dare to challenge this value, this universal value, our value, our trust on freedom, on humanity, on equality, on prosperity. So it's just, actually, it's just very, very sad. And uh, I'm happy that we can talk a little bit about this, but um, to start with, um, we know each other since many years and uh, I know you are a poet and uh, I am not because well, somehow I think the, the, the real life, the reality is so fantastic and so, um, fascinating. So I am not the type to write poet. I write lots of essays and uh, political com commentaries. And I try to be an observer and uh, to reflect what I observe, what I see, what I think, what maybe also what I judge. So that's what, what I'm doing at the moment. But uh, since many years, I uh, uh, I'm, I worked in the 
uh, uh, in the university. Maybe you, you or the other um, people would ask, well, uh, Tianqi is uh, now in Germany. How come that? She is a Chinese. Yes, I was born in China and uh, grown up in Taiwan, but uh, I met my German husband many years ago. And so I followed him. And after my study in Taiwan, I um, came to, the, uh, to Germany. And uh, that's why I stayed decades of uh, years uh, in Germany. And uh, well, sometimes I think I'm half Chinese, half German, because lots of, uh, uh, you see the, the German language is very precise for me. And I think that helped me to, um, uh, to reorganize sometimes my thinking and reorganize my own language. You know, Chinese language is sometimes not precise. It's a, a little bit uh, poetic language, actually. And uh, so it's, it's, it's never very, very clear. You can say one thing, and but actually it means 10 different things. So, but I learned through the German language other ways of thinking and uh, to deal with the language. Well, now I'm, I'm saying lots of different things. Maybe you want to uh, start another question, please. No, no, wonderful. Here, the object is uh, your portrait as a, a, a for me, a, a freedom fighter for all humanity, actually. And it's great that um, you have this uh, uh, German uh, addition to your Chinese background. Uh, thanks to international um, uh, relations, including marriages, uh, I think world peace can be more realistic to achieve in the nearer future. Um, because chauvinism is based on uh, homogeneous, uh, so-called homogeneous uh, social groups. And we, we don't want that. Um, uh, looking uh, from Turkey, um, trying to look at everything as a citizen of the world uh, since uh, 1968, uh, when I was 15, um, I've been trying to improve myself. And when I look at the world, uh, I think basically like this. Um, uh, it's great that uh, the Hitler uh, regime uh, collapsed and the US um, uh, with the Soviet Union, or after the Soviet Union, uh, was successful uh, with all the uh, uh, forces against Hitler and etc. And then we, when I look at China, I see um, uh, w uh, what we have to call, I think, some sort of Western imperialism and also Japanese attack. Um, um, so uh, a lot of pain and suffering in China, very rich history, very rich yes. history. And, um, uh, and then uh, a lot of uh, struggles, et cetera. And then we have uh, a new world power. Mm -hmm. When when I look at the world, when I see uh, the United States, Russia, and China uh, excluding the aggressiveness of uh, uh, Putin, uh, I can't help thinking that. I'm glad the United States is not alone. I'm glad there are other uh, superpowers because the US attacks whenever uh, they find feasible, you know, uh, but that doesn't mean uh, we shouldn't overcome this triangle. I, I think uh, the rest of the world, uh, we, if we cooperate better, 
more efficiently, including the uh, citizens of all those countries, mm -hmm. uh, we can go beyond uh, what is at present the status quo. Uh, yes. So I cannot say I am sorry because there is a strong China. Uh, but my conflict is that there is this power, but it is, uh, I would, would I want to live there? That's another question. I would not. I would, would I want to live in North Korea? No, I would prefer Definitely. South Korea, honestly. So what to do now? Uh, do, I understand actually what you are thinking. It's very good that you uh, actually give us a very short uh, uh, summary about the past uh, in, in the modern time of China. China suffered a lot under the Western imperialism in nine, 19th century. You know, maybe you, I don't know whether you remember, but we Chinese, every Chinese know, 1840, England started the so-called Opium War in China and forcefully want to in, forcefully imported um, opium to China. The whole country, it was still an empire, the Qin Empire, Qin Dynasty. So China becomes very, very weak about 10% of, or, or even more of the, of the uh, population are smoking opium. So China becomes so weak. And one Western uh, force after the other, England, uh, Italian, Spain, and France, and U USA, all the country comes to China. They want to open the harbor. They want to do, actually they want to do uh, trade with China, but uh, finally they started a war, one war after the other. Finally, it was the, uh, how do you say the, the eight forces, eight country, Western country, including Japan, of course, uh, invading China and China has lost the war and has to pay a huge sum of compensation. So this is a historical shame, a historical shock for all the Chinese. This trauma experience followed all the Chinese through the 20th century. Uh, China had, uh, the, Dr. Sun Yechen has started a revolution and uh, thrown up the empire and China becomes a republic in 1911. And then we started the war with Japan uh, for eight years in the 30s. And after the war, the Chiang Kai-shek government fight against, with the, against the communist uh, party. The communist party was founded in 1921. And the revolution in China started, as I said, 1911. So the Chiang Kai-shek part. And so these two, these two parties, actually only 10 years, one after the other, was set up. And then after the, after the Second World War, China fell into the civil war. And the communist party has won the war. And they, it, in 1949, it, it uh, governs the whole country till today. Why I say this? Just because you, you have used the word imperialism. I agree with that. And this is this trauma, um, traumata, this is horrible um, experience. Um, always follow the Chinese till today. And it has been abused by the gov government, by the Chinese car. Why there is a, a blind patriotism, nationalism in China. 
uh, you used one word, chauvinism. I like that word because we say, I always say, the Chinese have this Han chauvinism mentality. Han is the, the main folk in China. It's over 95% of the Chinese uh, population, well, over 90% Chinese are Han people, for, including me. The rest are the Mo Mongolian, Tibetan, Uyghurs, and Turks, and so on, and others. And uh, so the, the Han Chinese, if I say Chinese, I mean Han. Uh, the Chinese have this historical uh, bad experience. Xi Jinping government, Xi Jinping is come to power in, in uh, 2013. He used his strategy. He said, we Chinese have to stand up and we have to recover the glorious history of our Chinese people. He said, this is the Chinese dream. This Chinese dream is based on this <clears throat> past history, based on this blind mis misleading patriotism. And, and that's why, and excuse me, that's why what happened in Xinjiang against the Uyghur people nowadays, you know very well because the Uyghur people are very close to the Turk people. You have the languages is very similar. I think you can even understand if a Uyghur speak. So <clears throat> why the Chinese are suppressing the other minorities? Why are they suppressing the Tibetan, the Uyghurs, the Mongolian? It is this chauvinism mentality. So this is horrible. And if I say that, I think also think uh, of Putin. Why he, he's suppressing the other people? Why is su su uh, suppressing um, um, the, 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 the Ukraine people? They have the same language, they have the same culture. Actually, they have the same root. But this is, this, this mentality is just horrible. This is, um, this is what I, you said, well, China is big and strong and even prosperous nowadays. But I, I think there is one thing missing in, in today's China. Uh, what is that? That is um, in German words, it's Vergangenheit. Um, <clears throat> Bewältigung. In English, I think it's come in terms with the past. So you, you reflect to the history. You have a cultural memory. You know what happened in the past in your country, in your nation. And the Chinese uh, the Communist Party want that the people forget what happened in the past hundred years, because the Chinese government, the, the Chinese, uh, sorry, the Communist Party, since they, they uh, rule the country, they start one political campaign after the other. They pick up the enemies among the people. They say, these are counter-revolutionary or the fort or the, or the mistake or the misery is because these counter-revolutionary are against our government, against our people. So this is this is horrible. And one, one political campaign after the other. In the peaceful time from 1949 till 1979, in these 30 years, there are over 30 million Chinese dead because of the wrong policy of the Chinese Communist Party. No, the people don't want to talk about it. And the Chinese Communist Party want the people forget that. No way, I tell you, you are a writer, I am a writer, I'm a journalist. We always have to remind the people what went wrong, what is going 
to a wrong way. We have to learn from the history. If we don't learn from the history, we will make them, we will repeat the mistake again and again. So sorry to disturb your, your um, what you have said, but I think this is very important to say that because I see what today happened. It has something in the thinking, in the way, uh, in the ideology, in the value, it has some similarity with all this intolerance, this very narrow, mind, narrow minded thinking, very narrow minded patriotism. I think Putin wants to restore the Russian empire and that is wrong. That's totally Putin. wrong. I agree. And uh, uh, there are some people in Turkey who want to revive the Ottoman Empire. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's a tragic comedy, uh, leading to a lot of too much cost already. Um, how um, these are very important points. And actually, for example, when a Chinese spokesperson speaks, uh, they say foreigners, mm -hmm. foreign friends. But mm -hmm. from an internationalist perspective, there shouldn't be any foreigners. I mean, the language is exclusive. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. uh, if we are truly internationalists or um, better even, um, I prefer to say earthmates, uh, mm -hmm. then for us, there is nobody, nobody's foreign. Uh, we are all on the same uh, planet. And uh, this, um, we see a similar approach in Hungary, I'm, I think, and in other places, this trying to uh, depend on the some past uh, national, um moments of victory or whatever and uh, how can we build uh, a, a world peace with that we cannot we because this will keep feeding hatred and conflicts uh and it's not a way out and um, uh, you you uh are in contact with uh, the journalists uh, in China. Yes. Uh, and um, what what else would you like to express? A anything yes. else? Yes. I want to um, mention some names. You see, the the pandemic, the COVID nineteen, has troubled uh, the the whole mankind, the whole world since two years, two and more years, almost three years. And it started in actually officially January, 2020. And it broke out uh, in Wuhan. And till today, we are still fighting against this pandemic. And I want to make, to, to, to uh, remind people, there are some victims of this COVID-19. When the Chinese government uh, declared uh, publicly to the whole world that uh, there is a very dangerous uh, virus, uh, this, um, this COVID-19, and it's closed, it shut down the uh, 11 million uh, people, a city, Wuhan. So suddenly the, the, the whole city was dead. 11 million population live in this city. And that was uh, January 23rd, 2020. After that, nobody can go to Wuhan, nobody uh, were allowed to leave the city, but there were some very uh, courageous 
uh, journalist, they go secretly to Wuhan and they did wonderful job. They try to talk to people if it's possible. They, they go to hospitals secretly and take pictures. They go to, how do you say, uh, crem crematory? Yes. Where the dead people are burned. Crematory. 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 They see there, there are smokes uh, rise, rising to the air in those crematory. So they took pictures and and if they take pictures, if they talk to people, they write down and post online. And it's just spread out like wildfire because nobody knows what happened in Wuhan. And those journalists, they report from on the hot spot. But very short, it was for, for a very short time, one or two months, all of them were caught. I can name several of them. One, one's name is Chen Qiu Shi, one is Li Hua Zhe, one is Fang Bin. This, they are young men. They were caught and they disappeared. Till today, we don't know where they are. And another, female journalist, her name is Zhang Zhan. She lived in Shanghai. After Wuhan was shut down, she just go directly there and took lots of pictures and, and make everyday report. And she was caught maybe three or four weeks later. I, I think only three weeks, she was caught by the police and transported back to Shanghai. And several months later, she was sentenced to four years to jail. She is still in jail. And they force her to show regret that she has done something wrong. She said, no, I haven't done some, anything wrong. I just did my job. I am a journalist. I want to tell the people what happened. And she is still in jail in, and um, last year, as she started a hunger strike. And she, so all, she was all, almost dying. Very recently, maybe um, three or four weeks ago, we got information that she is, she's getting better. She didn't die, but she lost so much weight. She, she, she's very tall. She's 170 or even almost one, 175 or so, but she weighed, she has a weight less than 40 kilo. So we, we were all very worried that she will die. And this is the way in a authoritarian country, you have no freedom of expression. The government does not allow you to tell the truth to inform the people. And I have lots of colleagues. Some are my friends, some are just, I, I just have read their things. They are in jail, authors, poets, um, lawyers, um, journalists, they, they, were in, they are in jail. Um, I think several dozens of them are still in jail. Some died. You remember the name Liu Xiaobo? Certainly, he died in jail too. Even he was a, a Nobel Peace Prize winner from 2010. They, he was four times in jail. The last time he was sentenced for 11 years. And uh, that was, uh, he was, he was, uh, put into prison 2008 and one year later was sentenced to 11 years. And one year later he got the Nobel Peace Prize, but he never left prison. Uh, to, the, to the Oslo ceremony, uh, I, I and some of my colleagues were in Oslo. We represent the, uh, 
uh, independent Chinese pen. So Liu Xiaobo finally died in prison in 2017. Before he died, the government threw him out of the jail and put him into a, a hospital because they don't want him to die in jail. But it's actually, he died in his, in his imprisonment. So this is, this is how an authoritarian regime is. It controls your speech, controls your words, controls your thinking. And you cannot tell the truth, you cannot inform the people. It's, it's incredible. We have something similar in Turkey, unfortunately. Unfortunately, uh, yes, I know that. Okay, but um, uh, in appearance, there are other parties and there is a so-called parliament, but in actual reality, what's going on is what I consider um, a sustainable autocracy, sustainable, uh, unlike uh, the uh, 20th century fascisms with, you know, one party. Today, learning from experience, one party is not very feasible. You got to save the image. <laughs> uh, well, um, I refuse to limit my horizon uh, to capitalism. And, uh, and uh, it is wrong to say that capitalism automatically brings democratization. On the contrary, we have seen the otherwise. But uh, so post-capitalism, transcending the limits of capitalism, but um, uh, with uh, protecting human rights, uh, freedom of organization, and uh, all the all the freedoms we have gained thanks to a lot of struggle. Um, uh, so um, uh, that's why I hope that uh, humanity will manage to create paths transcending uh, capitalism. I enjoy saying that Marx. Karl Marx was not an anti-capitalist. He was a post-capitalist because a slave owner or a feudal lord may also be an anti-capitalist. But Marx admired the capitalist uh, mode of production, saw that as a step forward, but also showed the limitations and the negative points about it. So it is not enough to be in the opposition, I think. What is the alternative? What is a better alternative? So some people in Turkey and elsewhere, I think, uh, they say, I am in the opposition. Well, that's not in itself sufficient, necessary, but not sufficient. Uh, so the, I just wanted to share these. Um, and um, uh, Pen is one of the major uh, contributors towards a better future. I, 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 I yes, agree. Okay. And yes. um, there are wonderful organizations, UNESCO, al although the limitations of the United Nations is obvious. Um, and there are many wonderful local and international organizations. Uh, what I had been thinking, okay, these are wonderful organizations, but uh, how about um, how about the relations uh, between them? Usually people or organizations focus on this area of life, on that area of life. Um, so that's why Earth Civilization uh, Network uh, can grow uh, like a air actually, without a formal organization, without a non-organization, maybe. Uh, I say, uh, I too am on this planet. I too am responsible. It's so simple. 
And I consider myself an Earth Civilization volunteer. So anyone who says that can consider herself, himself, an Earth Civilization volunteer. We cannot, we don't have to limit our horizon to the present. And we need to do something better. Our synergy can be can do better. That's all, very simple. So I think this simplicity may be good uh, because life is so dynamic and chaotic. When we, in, when we try to make a big uh, plan, uh, sophisticated plans, we tend to fail more. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to give some idea, more idea about this process. And, and uh, it's an ethical stand in, in encouraging uh, earth mates to uh, be more efficient. And I, I think uh, the 17 goals of UNESCO for 2030 are significant. I find the UNESCO calendar significant, mm -hmm. plus the Earth Day, the 22nd of April, which I consider the um, uh, um, uh, uh, the rebirth of our planet, I want to consider. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, please. I'll just stop uh, for a minute. No, I, 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 I like the the word earthmate, I think is a, it's, it's a great word. And um, as you uh, wrote to me and invite me to, to talk to you, I think, well, this is a wonderful idea because I used to many years ago, especially when the, the confrontation between um, Democratic Front and the Socialist Front in 90, the, for instance, the fall of Berlin War. And I thought, wow, finally we have a, we will have a peace, peaceful and prosperous time, but I'm wrong. Look what happened in this century, 21st century. In, we, we have 20, 2022, in this past 20 years, what happened to us? Lots of things. I, I become more confused about the whole thing, the, the whole world, the whole world order and uh, capitalism and, and democratic system or socialist system. I, I just sometimes I think, well, I'm already quite come to age, in my age, I should be, uh, become a little bit clever, but I'm not, I'm, I feel quite stupid. I, I understand nothing, but what happened in Europe now? What happened in, in Asia? I, maybe I can also say another very dangerous region through this war in Ukraine, I think that of course, where I come from, from Taiwan. And China is threatening Taiwan all the time. Since, I mean, in the recent years, and especially the, the, the last one year, China is sending air, air, military airplane crossing the, the, the island, sending the military ships crossing the island. It's horrible. Taiwan is a prosperous society. It's, um, demo it's just um, transfer from a soft dictatorship to a very democratic country. And it, it has 23 million population. It's just like a sweet, sweet, uh, like Switzerland in Asia. It's just a wonderful country. But China said, well, it's a one of our province. Just be it belongs to us. We want to take it over. Look what happened to Hong Kong. Hong Kong has been taken over to China in 1997. And now the, the China pressed, suppressed Hong Kong, take just, Hong Kong is no more a, a free place. 
it's a place where I cannot go. If I go there, they will, they will put me into jail. <laughs> or, or although I'm not, a, I, I'm not a Chinese citizen, I'm not even a Taiwanese citizen, I'm a German citizen, but they, they can put me into jail. So what happened to Ukraine make me really, it, I'm, it's very scary. I, I, I'm afraid that will happen to Taiwan too. China can be very aggressive and unpredictable. You never know what this kind of regime, what kind of this ambitious politician or dictator, what they will do, what's the next step. So it's quite sad at the moment and it's very worrisome. But uh, uh, I'm glad uh, to have met you and uh, you are uh, a role model for many people uh, with your courageous uh, uh, struggle. And uh, is there a suggestion to uh, young earthmates uh, that you would like to make? It's, it's very difficult to say anything because I sometimes talk to young people, they say, look at our environment. What happened in the recent year, this natural catastrophe is very unnatural. It is, it, it is because we, we have ruined our, our nature through the civilizations, through the, the, the industrialization. So I, and today I talked to a young uh, medical uh, person. She said she's 25 years. She doesn't understand what happened in Ukraine. I said, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand that too. But for young people, I think it is important always try to always try to say to to try to get as uh, if it's possible to the right information and try to think about it don't believe anything it's a, lots of fake news online don't believe what the politicians are telling you are promising you you should be critical but not always negative and never lose hope because I still think that humankind has some, some very positive nature. We shall never give up hope, even if maybe it will, we will face a very dark time. I'm, I'm sorry to say that but never give up hope. Think lots of people are suffering. If you are not satisfied with your life, think that other people have even harder life, more hardship. So that's, I really don't know what to say, but I, I, I hope that if you can help yourself, if you have a little bit strength, try to help the other. It, no matter how little it is, try to support other. If you help other, you help yourself. Wonderful. A, a great finale uh, for this uh, uh, episode. And I'm grateful to you. And uh, we are together. I enjoy saying this, we are together. And- uh, Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Please, let's go on. Uh, this is, uh, Yes. yes, we need to improve our synergy. We yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.